This is me indulging the moment with my cup of coffee and admiring the beauty of my BYD seal. After two months, I'm still amazed how my Atlantis Grey BYD seal changes colour under the sunlight. Hi everyone, welcome to another Sky Perspective video. There's a recent update on the BYD Android application and this has reminded me that many of you have requested me to do a video on the BYD app. So here's the deep dive. The recent update added this rescue and customer service section and they modified the seat heating and ventilation menu. Now, there is just a big on-off button on the seat and to switch between ventilation and heating, we need to swipe between screens. It kind of makes sense because in summertime, we will be using ventilation and won't be using heating. The button used to be very tiny like this with both heating and ventilation buttons squeezed onto each seat. The new UI presentation is better, but I just can't stand this. Why are the words not at the center of the slider button? Sorry, it's my OCD again. Anyway, moving on. Rescue and customer service is new to this update. This screen is just a convenient shortcut to call roadside assistance and customer service so we don't need to remember the numbers on our phone. Pressing this button simply sets the roadside assistance and customer service phone numbers onto our phone dialers. And see this click for feedback at the bottom? It's kind of like a half-done implementation. Am I giving feedback or is this a service evaluation or consultation? And why am I able to select multiple categories to feedback against? I remember on the previous screen it says, has your issue been resolved? So is this the feedback for specific issues that we have lodged previously? To be honest, if I need customer service, this is who I'll be emailing. And I have to say, BYD Australia Customer Care has been great. Every time I email them, they will always respond to me and keep me informed. Let's get back to the app. The best part of having an EV is the ability to see our car charging status, like the percentage of the battery, estimated traveling distance, aka the range, time remaining to charge to full, as well as the current charging power. And when the car is not charging, it only shows the range and battery percentage. Apart from checking the status of our BYD seal, we can also remotely control the car, for example, remotely unlock the car. And when I say remotely, I mean anywhere we have an internet connection. Basically, our phone BYD app sends a command through the internet to the car. And the car has a mobile SIM card that uses mobile network to access the internet. See this tiny red no network icon? It's indicating the car is not connected to the internet currently. And when I click on it, I see these instructions to re-establish connection. When the car is not connected, our phone's physical proximity to the car doesn't matter at all. What this means is if we lock the car and the car loses its mobile network internet connectivity like in the basement car parks, We cannot unlock the car with the app, even if we are standing right beside the car with our mobile phone app. It would be nice if we can use our mobile phone's NFC to unlock the car. This is my current cardholder wallet, and I carry this together with my Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra phone, Galaxy Buds 2 Pro earbuds, and car key every day. I just bought this new Valkit card holder and I plan to put my BYD NFC card in the outer pocket and all my other credit cards in the main compartment. So in the event the car loses mobile network, I can easily slide out the BYD NFC card and tap on the side mirror to unlock the car. The Valkit card holder wallet is a lot more compact compared to my old wallet. And also I have one less car key to carry now. Just these three things. The model I've got can hold up to five cards in the main compartment 
and we can easily press the lever at the bottom to pop out all the cards. It's a pretty nice well-made design and they have all sorts of colors and design for 6, 8 and more cards. Valkit didn't sponsor this video by the way, I bought this wallet myself from Amazon and I'll leave my affiliate link in the description down below in case you are interested. Moving on to the next button on the app. This button flashes the indicator lights 15 times for us to find our car in the dark car park. And this button will both sound the honk and flash the indicator lights. It's very annoying, so use it only on desperate times like when we forgot where we park at the shopping centre car park. Inside this air conditioning menu, we can choose between heating and cooling, adjusting the temperature, scheduling a time to start the aircon, and choose how long we want the aircon to be running. We can also choose the air circulation mode too. And if we can't be bothered tinkering with all this, we just simply press the on off button on the main menu to turn on the aircon manually and the car will use the previous aircon settings. Inside this door and window section, we can see if our BYD seals door, windows, trunk and frunk are open or closed. There is also this up window remotely button to remotely wind up the windows, which I don't find it useful. If you use this button, let me know in the comments down below in what situation will you use this button. Next item is the tire pressure settings. There is nothing we can do in this menu apart from just checking the tire pressure. Oh, and many of us doesn't know this, we can check the odometer reading on the app. It's hidden inside this user profile icon where it shows my BYD seal odometer mileage as well as the vehicle identification number, the VIN number. In terms of security, there are two layers of protection. There is this login password, which is the password to log in to this Android application using the email we register with BYD. And there is also this second operation password, which is required when we want to operate our BYD seal car, like remotely turn on the aircon, lock and unlock the car. Basically, if we want to send a command to the car from the app, it will require us to enter this operation password. Without this operation password, we cannot unlock our BYD seal even though we have access to the app. This is good because if a hacker hacks into our email and reset the login password to access the app, they still cannot unlock our car to steal our car. The other thing to point out is that if we need to install the app on a second phone, like our partner's phone, we need to use the same email address and the same operation password, meaning we have to share the passwords with our partner. In the settings, we can choose what type of notification we would like to receive. This is a sample of the notification I receive, and I find it quite handy to know what time the car is fully charged to 100% in the middle of the night. And this remote control verification is basically for us to choose if we want to enter the operation password every time we send a command to the car, or just enter the password once for every 5 minutes. I don't know what this auto login is. Let me know in the comments if you know what this is. Biometric login is to use our fingerprint to log in to the app. And Biometric login is not for the operation password. Alert sound is basically the sound effects after we have successfully sent a command to the car. For example, we hear this from the app on our phone after turning on the aircon. As for this client service section, 
we can select how we want BYD to correspond with us. For Australia customers like me, it seems like we can only choose the option by email. And in this About Us section, there are terms and conditions, privacy statement, comments and feedback, and we can check for new version of this mobile app. If you hadn't realized, this is the second feedback section of the app. Remember I mentioned earlier, there was also a confusing feedback link in the rescue and customer service section of the app. It seems like BYD is really keen to get our feedback, which is good as their company is constantly improving over the years. Back to my new Valkit cardholder wallet. It's a shame that the outer pocket is also RFID protected. If not, I can just tap the card holder directly on the side mirror without pulling out the NFC card. Well, at least the other cards are RFID blocked and don't interfere like they do in my old wallet. There is also this center console tray accessory I bought, which I've used to put my spare earbuds, charging cable, pen, and wallet. I'll cover this and all my other BYD seal accessories in another upcoming video, so remember to subscribe so you don't miss out. Hopefully you found this video useful and please click that like button so that it can spread to more people. Thanks for watching this one and I'll see you in the next video.